G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. Today I'm going to do a landscape layout and we're going to do a simple painting for you beginners, but one with a few elements that I hope a lot of you like. So it'll be some horizon lines, sky, some trees cascading over the painting and some water coming at the front. So it's got a few elements that make up a good visual painting for you beginners to hang on your wall once you've painted it, okay? And be sure to practice procedures if you're not too familiar on how to do them. Don't just jump into them. Put some time and effort into practicing different subjects and procedures, all right? So I'll put the uh, size of the canvas up there because a lot of people like to know what it is in centimeters and inches, which is fair enough. And um, we'll get some colours going up the screen as well, so you can pause it and write them down. And don't forget, if you're having a painting party with me, you've got your friends over and the big TV's going, get everyone over and nibblies and drinks and put the YouTube on and paint along with me, all right? And we can all have some fun, eh? All right, so get on over here and let's get right into this. No more messing around. I want to start with the sky half and I know that in this sky I'm going to do some blending with clouds. So down here on my palette I'm going to start off with some soft craft paint. It's a flowing white paint and I'm going to put some medium retarda in there, clear medium retarda. And I'm going to mix that on this, I'm just using a two inch synthetic brush. Just something I can ply that onto the canvas. Okay, so I want to get the sky half done. I'll come a bit lower than the sky, just so as we know we've got a lot of safe coverage there. So take your time how you do this. Get your... I want it like this with the retarder and this flow white, because it's going to allow my sky to blend like an oil paint, all right? And it's a lot of fun. If you have your own way of doing a sky, by all means, do your sky your way. I'm just showing you my way here. All right, now we're ready to incorporate some beautiful blue into that and get a sky popping onto our canvas. I haven't cleaned that brush. Now for my blue sky, I'm going for Thalo Blue Red Shade. Now see how that's lightening up as I'm tapping it into the brush? That's because I've already got that white contaminated still in my brush and my canvas is retarded and got the wet flow paint on there. So this is gonna lighten up because you don't want a dark blue sky. So I'm gonna start from the top and I wanna bring this down to the horizon line. I probably want my horizon a bit below the middle of my canvas. So I'm gonna crisscross that into the um, weave of that canvas panel there, just like that. And then I'll Pull the brush strokes out. Now I want the bottom a little bit lighter. So I'm just wiping that brush. I'm not going to wash it. I'm just wiping it with a paper towel. I've got some more flowing white paint there. I'll get it on both sides. And I might add just the littlest bit of quinacridone magenta. Just there. See what I've done? I've just tainted that blue, the white lighter value and it's got that little bit of quinacridone magenta in there and I'm just going to come across here so in hindsight it might be white paint but it's got that touch of red in there and I want to come up I'm massaging it into me blue now I'm going to come up and blend it and have a gradient of the two colors but that Clear medium retarder with the flow white on my board first allowed all that to move like an oil paint. All right, we've done that. Now it's still wet. While it's wet, we want to put our clouds on there. So I'm going to do the clouds the way I do them and the way I've shown you many a times. Now, if you've got your favorite way of doing clouds, you do your clouds on your sky. We're up to, we've got the sky on. Now we're up to incorporating our clouds. So I'm gonna use, I use my fan brushes to apply the paints and a blending brush. So we're gonna use a titanium white. I'm using a mid-tone gray out of a tube and probably a little bit more of that magenta. So I'm just grabbing a little bit of that magenta on my shadow brush, the one I wanna to use to apply the shadow. And I just normally like to get this gray. I'm slowly 
I'll just wet my brush a little bit, pull it out till I'm getting that purpley gray color that I want. And we'll get some blue into there as well, make it a bluey gray. There we go. Because I was driving home yesterday and I was looking at the cloud shadows and they were a bluey gray. Now I'm going to pick up my brush. I'm using my fan brush to apply my clouds. All right. And I'm going to have a tree coming over here, but I want something to fill this up. So first I'll add some distant Australis cloud up into the sky. So I'm just stamping that on, sort of like I do mist. Okay. This is my favorite thing. I'll grab a blending brush and I wanna blend that into this blue. Now that blue is wet and retarded and it's gonna allow this to merge softly. Don't wreck your head too much if you can't accomplish this. Practice it, practice your skies, get the clouds the way you like it. So when you're watching a tutorial and it's time to do clouds, you can do it your way. It's always important to clean your brush. I've cleaned that. Now I'm going to add some more clouds. I pretty much want something coming all the way across. So what I'll do, I'll start from, uh, yeah, I'll blend this way. So I wanna get some of these a long way there, pick up some more. And I'm creating the top of the cloud like, I'm not worried too much down here. I'm creating the top. Well, we'll go to about there for now. Now grab a blending brush. I like me two inch blending brush, just something simple from the hardware store, your Home Depot store. And I wanna blend down, give it a bit of a bottom, okay? Wipe your brush as you blend. I like to tickle that out to buggery there sometimes. Tickle the tops a little bit and create a bottom. Don't worry too much if you haven't got a bottom yet because our shadow color is going to create that. Now soften the tops a little bit if you wish. Put your habits in there. Now there's the beginning of our simple cloud. Now I'm picking up this blue shadow color gray that I mix with a different fan brush. And I wanna give the heavy bottom bum to this cloud. So I'm pretty much going along giving it its bum. But in my mind, I want bits spidering up into this cloud body. Okay, just like that. Put that brush down like a true gentleman. Pick up your blending brush again. Now you want to, if you want to get these clouds, you want to start stamping, looking at your work as you're stamping, okay, and then you realize, oh, I've got to go a little bit heavier, bit of twisting involved, manipulate those paints together. And this is going to give our second stage of the cloud. Okay, so you pretty much blended that gray, not too heavily, but into that white. Now come to the bum of your cloud. I like to call it a bum because it's the bottom and it's not a rude word. So we're going to create that bum of the cloud and look for parts that need blending. Okay. Okay, that's pretty much done. Now we just go to the simple third stage of our cloud, which I picked up some clean white onto the, another fan brush and I just want to spot in some yumminess. So this is creating the dimension, the 3D kind of, it's given it that sort of look. Now with this, to me it's important to sit that on top of your cloud and don't kill the, the, the vibrancy of that white. Leave that white, we'll see there. Sometimes you can get too much and if you think it's too much, you can go back with the gray. But we want to just leave that yummy, I, I call it the yumminess. See now, to me, I feel fair enough. I've lost, lost a bit too much of my gray. I might just spot some of that back. It's just a matter of going backwards and forwards until you're happy with your finished brush strokes there, okay? That'll do. I wanna pretty much get this all the way across the page. Okay, so I'll sit this in front of that one now and I wanna come again like that. Just worry about the structure of the top of your cloud. The bottom will come in with the blending. Just from above the, under the top, I start dabbing and twisting and blending. 
and manipulate the blue color into the cloud. Now I'm going to start creating the bum area of my cloud, which is going to be about there, and I can fix that up with the shadow color. Now my top, yep, I want to tickle that, soften it. There we go, not too much. Back down here, pick up that shadow color on another brush. And the same again, get our bum in there and spider web it through our cloud. And soften that shadow color into the body of your cloud. And it depends how many clouds you want to do. You can paint clouds until the cows come home. You can have a painting just on clouds. All right, there we go. And I might spot some yumminess in that. See, I like the way this white is sitting that one back down. We'll spot a little bit of yumminess just around about there. And sit that down, but leave the brightness of it there as well. Alright, I want something here. Creating the top. And I'll just come off the canvas there pick up some more white wipe my blending brush and do the same again okay I want to create the bottom tickle the tops a little bit picking up the shadow color and Paint the bum on it and get some billowing up into there. Now remember to, remember to take your time when you're painting anything, clowns, your whole painting, whatever. There's no rush to do it. Oh yeah, look at that. I like that. I want a bit more heaviness just at the bottom here. Just because it's coming off the canvas there. And we'll put our yumminess on here. So I'll sit that bit back. Just remember, all my paintings from my tutorials are for sale. Go to the link in the description below. You'll find my Facebook page where my available arts are for sale. And you can message me for a purchase. All right, now just to finish this sky off, I want to put some distant ones in the sky there, and these will be like blended down to the horizon line, just so it doesn't look like we've got water and some three perfect clouds sitting up there. So I don't mind, whatever, I'll find the top of that, and then I'm going to blend the bottom of that down. No bottom on these clouds here, there's no bum there, it's just blended down into the atmosphere here, into that polluted color we put on previously with the magenta and gray there. And let's get that pretty much. See, I'm feeling there's not enough there, so I'll just sort of scoot in some more, just so I've got something to blend down into the atmosphere while that paint's wet, okay? And then we'll put the horizon line on. This is all the blending that's need doing for this painting, so I don't have to do any more. We've got our... See, that create... What this, to me, in my mind, what this is creating is the atmosphere, that sphere shape in the distance, you know? And if you really wanted to get arty, you can go along and just... in some yumminess like that and, and leave it. All right? So I've just put some dots there where I want my horizon line and I want the shore. I'm going to bring it off an angle so we'll have some perspective going down the painting instead of just being flat head on, okay? I'm not going for a photo finish colour. I'm going to use, um, I've got some turquoise here. And I've got some flow white to lighten that. I want to pick up the rest of my phthalo blue red shade, okay, that's gonna be out there in a the very distance. You, you can tape it up whatever you want. I'm gonna use me bullshit stick here and just get that reasonably straight, where are we? 
okay and try and make your horizon line straight as possible Let's see my paints not very wet I need it a bit more looser than that on the brush so I've just added some more to it water to it and we'll get that reasonably straight and your, your, your edge line there doesn't have to be too sharp either if anything it's always good to make that soft but I want to get this there okay I've got it now to me that's me dark blue now I'm just wiping that brush okay picking up my turquoise coming under that and rub that into your blue so you get a beautiful gradient of the two colors there we go I'm just pushing them together now I'll come down here I'm coming on a wedged angle now I want this to come a bit lighter so that soft white paint I had I'll pull that into my brush till I get the value that I'm after that'll do and I'll come from here and I'll get that edge manipulated rubbed together until I'm happy with the transition and then I'll pull it down here like that and I'm leaving just a little bit of the edge open put some of the sand color because sometimes the sand is washing under the very shallow water and you need that in there and you can if you want add the little hint of dark water there just showing showing some shadows because I don't want it too much of a light band I'm just breaking it up there we go now once in what I normally do once I've done my water I like to put the sand color on as well and just dribble them together so I've got some yellow oxide and I'll get a little bit of this craft paint as well just to get the value I want again with that I'm going to leave a dark amount there because I want some of that to be dark all right that's the value I'm after remembering your painting you do it the way you want I'm just showing you my way how you can put something like this together so I'll come across to the green color and I'll using the very tips of my brush here to pull the two together right here while they're still tacky and wet and you want to lace some of this sand color out into the water just like that along here okay then if you think you've contaminated too much green into your sand color which I have now I'll clean this brush and reapply the sand color so I've reapplied my brush and I'll get all this sand color here try not to go too dark with your sand because your acrylics will dry darker and if anything I'd rather them lighter than darker the flow white wears into your paint very easily there we go I'm just going to wipe that brush on a towel because where they're meeting here now I've ruined that transition area so I want to put that back there we go beautiful the paint's still tacky none of this bottom half had retarder in it I only mainly use it for me sky I can feel here needs a bit more green back I've lost it oh wipe the brush this gives you a perfect opportunity to see how to repair things as you go there we go now this is still tacky it's still on its way of drying it's not super wet but it's tacky I've got myself quite a big uh, thin brush like a liner brush and that's going to allow me to lace on some water using my titanium white so this brush I've just quickly dampened and I want to get some of this titanium white onto the brush okay now because this is still wet I don't want to push it in I want to keep so I'm going to let's just say bring that there work out how I want this line to go pick up some more paint I want it loaded onto the the painting there I want to come across that sand 
pick up some more <clears throat> keep it in a horizontal way don't come too much down now I've done that my favorite brush it was a flathead brush in its day but it's gone a bit um, worn out and flared out and it's great for scrumbling and blending so the top half of this line I like to blend back so while it's still wet I want to just blend and scrumble it back making water movements see what is happening there into the water there and that sand color we bought there is now showing the shallowness of this water now, don't water this paint down. I wet my brush, but I think by scrumbling this, I've done it a little bit too much, but it's working all right. And we're getting that water foam movement just in the water. This is so easy to achieve for any beginner. If you think it's too hard for you, just practice bits of it. Just practice a little bit of this. Doesn't matter what color it is, but you're practicing the procedure. And then when you're doing your painting, you're going to say to yourself, hey, I know what I'm doing here. I know how to do this. Okay, so we're just the top, just the top. I'm just making movements of foam and agitation in the water there, okay? Simple. Now, I want something just a little bit bigger here, so I'm just going to pick up a flat brush, pick up some of that white and chisel it onto me brush, okay? And these don't have to be too big or too loud. So I want to, let's just say here, I want to come off from a V angle, if anything. So let's just say starting about there. This was some sort of crashing wave there. Just hint it in there any old way, that's it. And then we'll do probably, I'm just dancing it around. I want to get some sort of crashing motion here. I can come back and put some lighter values in there. So we're just creating some turbulence and then something about here, a bit closer to us. It's just a small, wave you know those ones that just go I've been at the beach a few times and you just hear those little ones walloping down just thump and going hey I'm not that big but I can still make a noise all right and I'm continuing the line if anything of water movement out here just like that as well and we'll just add a bit of darkness under there which will be this color to create the depth of those waves. So you got some of the darker color value here and I wanna just lightly, cause I wanna be able to blend that, just push that under the white, just so we got some sort of depth going on there. Under your, under your wave. These are small, we don't have to go and put those big detail-y eye where it's very light in there. Now I want some dark under here because we're just gonna, these these are small waves, but they're gonna have a little bit of, um, you know, bullshit value in them. So we wanna put the darks in the right spot just so as our lighters, colors that we add on are going to work. I'll just make sure my head's not in the way. And we're just getting some darker values here. Maybe some in there if you want. But that's pretty much it. I did pick up some cad yellow light because I'm looking at this. It is a bit, bit dark, so I just want some sort of that green light showing through there. So I'm going to grab this brush and use my little flathead just to sink that down a bit, just to break up. So I said I wasn't going to do this, but looking at the painting, it needed it. 
just some light there that shows some light values and maybe in here as well because I want to just pop this now with some more brighter white all right so I don't like the way this is a bit higher over there I'll get this one coming over it we want some white highlighting everything we've just put on now so I'm just using a, another flathead brush Just to create the harshness so we'll get this one back in there that one's all right now I'm going to pick up the other thick script liner that I had before and I want to create this movement of agitation out in there under the wave there where it's hitting the foam just like that and I want to grab that little scrumbling brush that I like to use hopefully I didn't leave it on there too long and I can scrumble that all into the foam there okay just like that very easy to paint water washing onto sand and I suppose if this was your forte and the more you do it whoo you can become the king of this sort of art okay and we'll just get some it's up to you how I'm just putting some really tense movement there, leaving that dark, trying not to kill all that dark. I mean, you can have a rock in here or anything, but there we go. Now using the colors on my palette, I've used the yellow oxide and the turquoise and I've made up a shadow color here. Now you want your brush nice and wet for this and under our white wash let's say about we'll start here you want a nice thin shadow coming from there twist your brush be nervous as you do it okay and i want to try something that i've never done before is grab a brush which is reasonably flat and disturb the bottom side of that shadow water let's just see what this does normally i leave it alone but i don't want it to be a big blob either i want it to sort of have faders to it that's not too bad i want it a little bit darker so i've gone and added some black we'll come over here maybe not too much black though this just sits your whitewash down. Come back here, twist your brush. Pick up some more. Okay, and if you feel you want to pull some out, let's give it a go. Maybe the black might be a bit too much. Let me have a look at that. That's all right, that'll be all right. That'll do me. I went a bit dark on that actually. So keep yours a bit browner with the sea colors. I'm just picked up the flathead brush and I'm just adding some white movement out here in the ocean, just so it doesn't look too bland. But I've been careful to keep them all on that perspective line. I don't want them to start going straight, it'll make it look crooked. The straightness to this painting is on that angle there to this vanishing point. So out here there's probably a dot. But anyway, now you can put a headland out here, a cape, or you know, a palm coming over a cross. You have a simple background to do a beautiful seascape. And it's quite easy to you know, it doesn't have to look like this, but so long as you can use these procedures, you'll have a great seascape. Okay, we can leave it at that. We've got a simple beach scene, but to make it more visual, I want to just lean in a palm right here. So we've got another value added to our painting. All right, so let's do a simple 
easy but effective looking palm for you beginners all right so we've got our colors down here the yellow oxide white i've added some burnt umber as well so i'm going to use a good old flathead brush i want to chisel it on i've got a little bit of water added to it just so it's going to flow off the brush and transfer onto the canvas so we'll block our trunk in with this now work out where you want it and you know i'm going to have the leaves coming about here so i'll fill up this area so i want me thing about there and probably come off maybe about here okay so that's roughly where i want it you don't want your trunk to be a straight line all right i want mine to be a bit of a curve so i'll start from the pointy end and come back out <laughs> oh wow it's really got a curve on it hasn't it let's get a bit of a curve on it pick up some more and build the body of that trunk up now okay okay so we're getting our trunk constructed getting the playing with it till we're happy with the thickness and the shape and see i like these flathead brushes because you can get a nice sharp edge on things this is going to be covered with the foliage now i want to grab some of the white and mix up a lighter value of that not too light though Gee, that's a bit too light maybe come over here there we go now our motions are going to be round up there now like this to create the shape of our palm so for my strokes i want it easier coming from the top is that pretty much dry yep i can lean on that now i want to just scratch it around that paint's still wet if it's too wet take the time and give it a bit of a dry just so it's it's tacky and then this can scratch on there i've got to load up the brush a bit more because it's a little bit too wet for me but use dry yours off a little bit just so we've got some natural looking highlights there keeping a lot of the dark now i've grabbed some of the yellow oxide tainted it with a bit of this shade color now this where are we i want to just I highlight the top of this trunk and just the the slightest scratch down into the actual tree itself so we'll go like that if you have a fantastic way to do your trunks do them your way okay just to finish that bad boy off i've cleaned that flathead brush and i've got forest green or you can use sap green and i've got a cad yellow light the yellow light is great for blending and mixing colors so we want to use this one to map in our palm fronds i'm pretty sure they're called a frong you don't want it too wet you don't want it dribbling down your canvas and i'm going to work from the middle now what i like to do is keep it nice and sharp and frong it out see like that sharp frong it out boom there's a simple frong you can go detail the buggery out of these but for those people who are learning if you don't know how to do a frong you can do them this way so let's put another one there there see there's so many different ways you can frong these up okay see what i did there so if anything i want these all pushed backwards i've dried everything as well so as i can like come over here like that that's one in front now we'll get one oh i've got to work this way now that way if i was on a table it'll be all right but filming for you guys that'll do just something like that you can get the gist of where i'm going with this And this dark value will be highlighted and we can because some i find some palms have uh, got their branches shaped by the wind the way they're pointing and that's pretty much what this one's doing okay now we're pretty much done that 
be sure, see this skinny little bit of the wheel here, right in here? Just busy that up a little bit, okay? Don't leave it undernourished like that. Just busy it up. That's all it is. Now we're going to dry this stage here. Now we'll grab some of our cadmium yellow light and pull this into there just so we're going to get a bit more of a brighter value of our green. Nothing too loud and yellow, you just want to keep it subtle but real looking. I've just added some water to that brush just a little bit so it flows. And everything up here has been dried so now I want to work out what's in front and what's behind. So this one is sitting there okay I want to have a look in the monitor that's okay we want to bring probably a little one there this one just over the the darker green not too don't kill all them darks I'm just gently highlighting a lot of this I want to keep Let's see if I can use my left hand here. It's important to dry every layer. Yeah, that's it, that's fine, just like that. I'll use my left hand and bring this from out of the darkness. There. Practice some palms and work out what your style of palm's gonna look like. Mine aren't realistic looking, but there is, you know you're looking at a palm. So I've mixed up my yellow with the remaining bit of green on my brush, just so we got a different value again from those two. And not too much of this now, probably, all right, to me, the sun's hitting it here, so I just wanna concentrate on this area and radiating down. So everything is dry, and I wanna, I'm just gonna put it on and scratch a little bit, like that. Just like that. How's that looking in the monitor? That's fine, I don't want to overdo this and if I feel if I have, I will go back over it with the appropriate green to darken it up. Pick up some more of that. You just want to hints of this. You need it, but you can very easily get caught in overdoing it. My left hand there. Now, I'll just sign that down here in the bottom corner somewhere, appropriately. Okay, we'll put a frame on that. <coughs> All right, we've got a beautiful ocean seascape, a protruding palm, a great sky, Everyone that looks at it knows what it is. It's not too shabby, eh? All right, I hope you enjoyed this little show today. There's some links in the description below. Press on those and see what suits you. There's ones for my art for sale. You can look at my Facebook page. And I have over 200 videos in my YouTube library and there's a lot of different subjects. So see what I've got available and know what's on hand for you to watch as well, all right? Um, if you like what you've seen today, tell your friends. If you don't, tell everybody, all right? Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.